Yo guys, this is a game against Silas in D1 MMR. I like going Conqueror and Ignite against him because it helps me just kill him and duel him in general. And I go this weird build again with Shojin Rush into Profane. And I tried Opportunity and Grudge just for a bunch of damage. And yeah, let's see how this game goes. Level 1 lane against Silas is good not to ward because you can win. So you want to be in lane ready to trade. I usually wait and, um, you know, see his spell before I level. That E did not hit me from Silas, but it's fine. And yeah, you want to wait just to see if they start E, then you want to start E because then you can easily hit your E <laughs> um, and get a bunch of damage. If they start Q, then you want to start Q because it gives you the range as well to match. Um, but yeah, I took a bad trade when I went too far forwards. So I panic ignite right there, which is not the best. But as long as his E doesn't hit me there, I'm pretty happy. We get an E with a Scorch there, not too bad. It's pretty good to go Scorch as well in this matchup because, like, right there, my E without Scorch would have done, like, no damage. So, yeah, I mean, this helps you in the early game. And I need to push because he has Teleport and I have Ignite. So I just push that wave straight away and then I base so that I don't get punished too hard and I concede some CS. This is something you might have to do if you take Ignite, which against Silas, I think you should. And, yeah, you don't want to fall too far behind, but... Make sure you just base if you feel like you have to. Otherwise, you're going to die on the next few waves, which I would. Because he'll get level 3 and he'll get W and he'll kill me. So now I walk back to lane. Luckily, my base was not too bad. I only missed 2 CS worth of XP. So I know I'm going to get level 3, but then it gets really awkward with the minion being 1 HP. And then I missed a Q. So he gets away with 1 HP in flashes, which is fine. But I'm pretty happy since I only missed 2 CS. And then right here, I'm thinking to just flip it because he has no flash. I know I can kill him with WW Flash E, so I'm just waiting for that. Try not to make it as obvious, pretend I'm going for that CS, and then I have WW Flash E. If you try to make it less obvious, it's usually a lot better. As I get flashed on and die. It's a lot better because, you know, I walk towards the CS, which is about to die, pretending I'm going to last hit it. And, you know, being more unpredictable is more important in that situation where you're trying to flash on them, you know, from a couple screens away, because that is broken as hell. Now I'm back in lane, I kind of want to show you guys a combo you can use against Silas. So a lot of Silas's, they like to E and then E straight away. So right there I just W to the side of his E, because then I can wait for his chain and then take the W. So his E2 is 100% not going to hit me. And now I'm on HP because I take a turret shot, which is not bad. I mean, not good. But I'm waiting to do that combo again, wait for his E. As soon as I see the chain, I take my W, I go in and I kill him pretty fast. Uh, it's pretty lucky that he doesn't W me, but because he wastes his E2, I'll probably just kill him. Unless he survives enough that he can get Q and his Q2 on me as well. And then right here, we just wait. W away. Uh, I can't get the push because Vi is camping mid, but it's fine. So I want to show you guys some tricks that you can use at level 5. Right now, I'm back in lane. Silas is roaming. And what I could do is I could shove the wave. But I have a nice wave on my side. And I'm going to get level 6. So if I slow push it, there's a good chance I'll get 6 as Silas comes back to lane. And of course he only hits level 6 once. So we get 6 and we go straight in. He uses E so he can ult and then buffer the Qs on his E2. I knew buffer, I knew uh, Vi was probably here, but I just keep going and I get lucky with the kill. But yeah, it's very important I don't push so that I can get level 6 and kill the Silas. Right here, a trick against Vi. You know that Vi's Q is going to have fixed range, so you can use your W backwards, and then he goes straight into all of your spells, and you can kill him as well. But the main thing is, level 5 is important, like, try and slow push and look for an angle where you can, you know, use your W right before you're going to hit level 6, so 1 or 2 CS off, and you look at that XP bar right over here, well, can't really see, but um, right next to your level, or above it, and yeah, when you're 1 or 2 CS off level 6, you use that little trick, uh, you can use it against any champ in the game, so it's very important to try and abuse your level 5, especially as Zed, so yeah, 5 to 6. So against Silas, you need to be really careful. Right here, I know he's going to hit 6, and even though I'm stronger, I'm level 7, I don't have ult, so you want to be really, really careful. I don't want to walk up without W. I want to tether on his E2 range, or his E, E2, or E1, E2 range. And you don't want to push the wave when it's pushing towards you. If you try and force it, he can just all in you. And get a bunch of damage down and then he'll slow push and then kill you under your tower so be very careful at this stage of the game where the lane is pushing towards you sometimes you could do stuff like that just place your w backwards and they brain dead you know e in but yeah right here i know he has no e so if silas doesn't have your ult yet you can ult and then q straight away because he has a little 
animation he needs to go through before he can steal your ult or when he presses ult on you and yeah that's pretty good against silas i also realized i have a silas guide so i'll leave it in the description of this video so something you can do against vi is when she uses q you can use your w close by right behind you and then throw your q's like i did just there it's a pretty good combo against vi in general now i just poke him down i all him with you know auto e ignite and then w alt on the tower shot so that it doesn't damage me but yeah using your w in a very short range against vi is pretty good i thought i was gonna die so i flash but then i lived pretty good against vi because then the q's come up faster and also a lot of the time you can dodge a q or you can like um all in her with conqueror especially like i do so the point i was making is don't be afraid to use your w backwards against champs that go into you yeah i'm not just silas and vi but like echo and stuff like that so right there i use my w backwards on the tower he uses e so i can ult him and then you know do the classic when silas ult you you throw your q's behind you to deal damage but right there i take my ult shadow at the same time just to confuse him a bit more and we kill him as I'm taking mid platings, my team kind of just runs it down bot lane. They overextend really hard trying to kill the enemies. And I wasn't going to move, but then Callista ends up surviving for very long. Right here, I don't want to ult the Caitlyn because I know she's already dead. And I'm okay with Callista dying. I see Silas was low and he just killed those minions. And then I sweep, so I realize, oh, there's no ward, so he's probably going to stick around quite close by. Go straight in, WW, onto his E2. Right here I see Soraka moving by and I'm thinking, well, it's time to make some big plays. He uses silence, so I'm like, okay, must be free. And then Vi comes out of nowhere. I was like, ah, I wasn't expecting Vi, which is kind of sad because I almost outplayed him. And then he flashes on me and I die. I want to show you guys a combo that you can use with Conqueror, especially when you have a bunch of haste. So I use my W on the wave, but then I wait for my W to be the last second and then I take it. I missed my E, so my W didn't actually come back as fast as it could have, I think. But yeah, you take the W and then you auto E and then you ult and then you E and then usually your, ult, your W is already up again. So it's a good combo to use with Conqueror especially. When you have six grubs, it's usually good to stick to the enemy T2 tower in the side lane and try to take it down. So that's what I go for. And I want to show you guys the power of weaving in your E's, like melee range E's. So I use my W and I'm like... Whatever, I'm going for the tower. But then I'm like, oh no. So I take the W and the E and then I flash. But I have my W again because I, you know, E the Vi. I mean, it's hard to follow, but if you watch it again, I weave in melee range E's so that I get my W up much faster. So it looked like it had literally like no cooldown there. So yeah, that looked pretty cool. But don't worry, guys. With every great Z play, there's always bloopers. So we go in, we kill Vi. And we're like, oh, we're so strong. Then we ult into the Soraka silence and we die. <laughs> But yeah, right there, the thing I should have done is I should have waited for my W um, after killing Vi and then played the fight slower. And I'm pretty sure I would have killed all three of them if I waited out the Soraka Silence. But yeah, some bloopers for you guys. So now I'm really fed. I have a bunch of items. And Opportunity with Grudge is actually a very strong item. I'm not going to make the same mistake as last time. I'm going to wait the Soraka Silence. And then I'm going to go in because Caitlyn also uses Trap. We just YOLO, flash in, get another W. I W queued because I thought the Soraka might survive, but that was a bit silly. But the good thing there is that I kept the W, and then I take my ult shadow, and then I take the W. You just want to keep creating distance and space to kite out your enemies. And at the end, obviously, we go for Vi because Silas looked like he was dead to my team, which he was. And after that, I think my team goes and ends the game. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.